And for this last example, we're going to be looking at the energy transfers involved in boiling some water in an electric kettle. Now for this one here, it's really crucial to make sure that you identify the start point well, because that really depends on how the electricity is generated in the first place. The end point is going to be when the kettle automatically switches off as the water gets to 100 degrees. Now for this example, we're going to start at the wind turbine. Now the reason that the blades turn is because of the kinetic energy stored in the wind. And that then causes these to move around, and as they rotate, these now have kinetic energy, which causes inside the top of the wind turbine, there's actually a generator. So this is turning round, and that's then starting to generate electricity. Now that electricity is then transferred electrically, I guess through the national grid from the wind turbine to the plug where you actually plug your kettle in. Now the end point, because this is when the kettle and the water have both got hot, the end point is going to be the thermal store of the water and also the thermal store of the kettle. Make sure you don't forget that. And uh, basically that's it. So we start with maybe the kinetic store of the wind, then the kinetic store of the, the wind turbine which is moving. This is then transferred electrically to the kettle and then it's the thermal store of the kettle and the, and the water at the end, which is the end point for this example. So it's always important when you look at these energy transfer examples, identify your start point, get a good clear end point, think about the stores at each stage, and then just identify which transfers are the ones which are actually taking place. And that's all there is to it. And then it's just a case of you writing that, maybe in a set of bullet points so that it's very clear what's happening from one stage to the next.